Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have 10 recommendations where the hero falls first. I absolutely adore when you're in the hero's head in these books and you get to read about them falling in love with this heroine first. It is so swoony to me. Okay, I have two other recommendation videos where the hero falls first and I'll link those down below if you're interested, but let's get into these 10 books. As always, these 10 books, if you're interested in them, will be linked down below for you to click on. The first one that I have is Rain Me In by Miss Kayla Gross. I love Kayla Gross. Um, this is a cowboy romance, if you will. The heroine is Blake and the hero is Gavin. So Blake in here, she experienced some trauma while riding on her horse. Her brother actually passed away while on the back of the horse and she hasn't ridden since, even though she is a very famous, I think, barrel racer, if I'm not mistaken. And um, she just has a lot of trauma surrounding horses now. Her mom, however, got in an accident recently and she needs some help around the farm, the ranch, and she moves back in for a short while to help out. One of her first nights back, her dad convinces her to go to the country western bar that's in town with him. And there she bumps into Gavin, who is her brother's best friend. Her brother is not with them anymore. Um, however, Gavin is notoriously known for being her brother's best friend. Gavin's actually a few years younger than her. And so he fell for her years ago, like when they were growing up, but he never thought that um, Blake would give him the time of day. This book starts out with Gavin, like convincing Blake a very peer pressure like to ride the mechanical bull that's at the bar and Blake is pissed because she has all these feelings around getting on something that moves like a horse you know like it's a mechanical bull but like it still sparks trauma in her and uh Gavin grapples his butt off to try to convince this woman to at least go on one date with him <laughs> so yeah Gavin has been falling for Blake for years and when he sees her again all these years later um, he decides to shoot a shot, basically. Next, I have a mafia romance. This is Hidden Truths by Neva Altaj, the third book in the Perfectly Perfect series. You can read these books as standalones. Um, I think they're perfectly fine reading them as standalones. A lot of these characters don't like overlap at all. Um, you do meet this hero in a previous book in the series, but like very briefly. Anyway, with that being said, uh, this one's about Sergei. Sergei is a part of the Bratva and he has experienced quite a lot of trauma in his life, he has a lot of space out moments that can be quite volatile and dangerous to other people who come in contact with him when he's in this mental state. And then one day when he's doing this like run with some of his family members, a part of the Bratva, he finds this woman, like skin and bones woman in the back of a truck um, while they're transporting some stuff, like they're hijacking another um, mafia family's products. And he takes one glimpse of her in the back of this truck, passed out and knows like that woman is mine. Her name's Angelina and uh, she finds herself in Sergei's home when she wakes up. She was escaping a very dangerous life. Her father had planned a horrible, dangerous life for her. So she ends up escaping and the only way she knows how is to get on one of those transport trucks um, where she doesn't eat or drink water for like days on end. Then she realizes where she is and it is in Sergei's home who is a huge rival to her father. And she thinks that if Sergei found out who she was, like, oh, it would be over for her. Even though she has nothing to do with her father, like, she believes that Sergei would use her to get to him. Little does she know, though, that Sergei knows who Angeline is, like, right from the get-go. He can recognize her. <laughs> and um, he is determined to make Angelina his in every way possible. So he keeps her, like, locked up in his house. Finding Gene Kelly is my next one. If you want a sweet contemporary romance read with fantastic chronic illness representation, I really recommend this one. Our heroine of this story has endometriosis and its own voices rep for that. So our heroine of the story, she grew up with this rivalry with Liam Kelly. There was something that happened to them in high school where she has not forgiven him because of his betrayal. And uh, she just really despises it. Anyway, it's years later. She's a grown woman now. She lives in Paris and her best friend comes to visit her one day, but then she notices that her best friend brings Liam and she's like, what is Liam doing here? Why is Liam here with you? And they have to fake date for a specific reason. Evie may or may not know that Liam has been pining after her for years and years and years and years, and he's finally going to let his feelings be known. <laughs> Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lisa is another one that I thoroughly enjoyed. It has a great representation, um, own voices for autism. The hero and the heroine of the story are a hoot and a half. 
to me. Like I love them. Their names are B and Jamie and their friend group has decided they haven't met before, um, but their friend group has decided like, Ooh, these two are perfect to be together. They end up meeting at a party and they don't like each other right from the get go. Um, but they decide to fake date in order to get their friends like off their backs. And obviously through their fake dating, real feelings develop. I thoroughly believe that Jamie was smitten right from the get go. Like, I, I just know it. So, um, in my opinion, I think that this is Hero Falls first. Another one is The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. This is a forbidden romance. I think I've talked about this in my forbidden romance rec video a few videos ago. The heroine of the story is in her 40s and she just found her husband cheating on her. So she decides to kind of have this confidence moment where she's going to do all these amazing things to feel better about herself. And one of those is to lay out topless by her pool. She forgets that the pool boy is coming though to clean the pool that day. And he is like kind of flabbergasted at first when he sees her by the pool and she notices and he's like, oh no. And she's like, oh no. <laughs> But they're very attracted to one another. Um, he is significantly younger than her and it is uh, her best friend's son. So that's a big forbidden element in there. Um, but the hero has always like had a little crush on her <laughs> like, growing up. So he definitely fell for this woman first. I do have some Ruby Dixon books to mention really fast um, because there are a lot of heroes who fall first in these Ruby Dixon books. So first I have Barbarian's Prize by Miss Ruby Dixon. This is book number six. Yeah, Thix in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This one is about Tiffany and Salute. Tiffany is one of two human women who have crashed on the planet that have not been mated yet. And all of the alien free alien men on this planet are like gobsmacked with Tiffany, think Tiffany's beautiful, are gonna try and convince her to be there as in every way possible. And Tiffany is then very overwhelmed by all this attention. She does not want it. She does not care. She doesn't care if she has a mate or not. She doesn't really want one at the moment. Then she finds some solace in Saluk, who is one of the men, a part of the tribe. And Saluk definitely like wants Tiffany. He knows that like, I think this woman is mine, but I don't want to make her uncomfortable. I don't want to make her feel like the other men in our tribe are making her feel. I want her to feel welcome and safe with me. So if friendship, is first, that's what's gonna happen. So this is a friends to lovers romance where Saluk puts friendship first, even though he definitely falls for her way before that point. Another Ruby Dixon is When She's Wary, which is a short little novella that is really fun. This takes place on a planet called Rista 3. It's a planet where a lot of human refugees end up going to because they can't go back to earth. And so a lot of human women like own farms on this farm planet and there's other aliens like living on the planet too. So our hero of the story is an alien called a Praxian, which is like, I don't really know how to describe it. I have no clue. Oh, oh, he's kind of Praxian. That's Gren. <laughs> he's kind of like, he looks like Gren, kind of, a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> that's the best I can tell you is show you a picture of Gren there. <laughs> anyway, that's from Willa's Beast. That's Gren from Willa's Beast. Part of the ice home series anyway so our hero in here is like that alien creature he's trying to escape his brother's home that he's been crashing at for a few months now because his brother and his girl his new mate are like getting it on in the house all the time and he's like i cannot stand the smell the sound like it is awful um and then he comes across our heroine who kind of like lives next door right when she meets him she tases him <laughs> so definitely a neat cute moment um but he is smitten right from the moment that he sees her he's like oh my gosh this woman tased me like i'm in love <laughs> like <laughs> he's smitten from her right from the get-go the heroine not so much she has experienced quite a lot of trauma when it comes to aliens and so when she sees an alien man on her property like she thinks the absolute worst and so the hero of the story has decided to make this woman as comfortable as possible even if that means like standing feet away like at the start of her sidewalk just stand there and talk to her that way in a respectful manner he's not like stalking her or anything he's just trying to get to know her and she wants to get to know him but she is terrified at the same time but yeah our hero in the story is definitely smitten with her <laughs> taken to raxia by elizabeth stevens is another alien romance that i absolutely love elizabeth stevens books have more like i want to say emotional depth that can be a little bit more dark compared to ruby book when i read a ruby book like there's going to be dark elements obviously we're dealing with dark topics in all of these alien books because a lot of women get kidnapped or they're enslaved and stuff like that is no joke like those are serious topics but elizabeth stevens like kind of takes it up a notch to a little more darker level so the heroine of the story is a part of this moon they live on this colony on this moon where humans live um she is actually a hybrid so she's part human part alien 
and she was conceived because her mother was forced against her will by the aliens who basically own this moon. They come, I think, once every two years, I want to say, and they basically have their way with all of the women of age without their consent. The heroine was a result of one of those unfortunate situations, and she's been living on this moon, and she's dreading the day that she comes of age or a man, one of these alien men, choose to be with her because she would not be willing at all. The hero of the story is the king of the planet Varaxia. So he notices that a lot of his goods and some of his money and supplies, resources are being sent to this moon. He's like, this moon doesn't have anything on it. Like what is going on? I need to go figure this out. He travels to this moon and figures out what is going on. And he is absolutely disgusted. He's like, why are some of my men doing this? I do not condone this. I do not want this. And then as he's like berating his men, for doing all this, he ends up sensing his mate. And he's like, you did not start all of this on a moon where my mate lives. Th my mate could have been a part of this. And so he's determined to find her and bring her back to the planet Braxia with him. So right from the moment he like smells her, he's like, she's mine. So he definitely falls for her first. A short sci-fi novella is Fall by Claire Kent. This one takes place on a prehistoric planet. So our heroine of the story, she kind of gets in trouble with the human government. So they decide to kidnap her and abandon her on this prehistoric planet in the middle of nowhere with no escape. And there she meets our hero who is basically prehistoric with a bunch of people he's living with. They are essentially like cavemen. The hero of the story doesn't really know how to go about courting a woman, especially with our heroine who knows nothing of their ways. Because what he thinks is like courting, she's like, what? <laughs> like she doesn't know what's going on. There's also a language barrier here and they don't speak, they don't speak the same language. So like what he thinks is like, she combing his hair is like, oh, they're basically like, married at this point. You know what I mean? So there's a lot going on that the heroine doesn't know about, but the hero falls for her first, even despite the like language barrier between the two of them. I really love this one. It's great. This is one of two like caveman-esque romances that I've read and I need more in my life. I've read this one in Transcendence. So if you have more, please give them to me. Like I've searched high and low and I can't really find any more. So please leave your recs down below if you have any. And the last one that I have for this video is a historical. And I feel like it is the one in this video that is definitely the most like he fell first. This is When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn. This is book number six in the Bridgerton series. So the second to last book. Now I don't love the Bridgerton books. Personally, I don't love them. I think I only really recommend, I only recommend book number two and this one. So Anthony and Kate's story and Michael and Francesca's. I don't really like any of the other ones. So don't, don't hate me. They're just not my cup of tea because the men in those books are awful to me. <laughs> this one though, I do love Michael. Whew. So Michael was in it for like the long haul, even though he like, he gave up many times because he knew it was wrong. So Francesca at the beginning of this book is married, but it's not to Michael. It's to Michael's cousin. Very soon in the book, like chapter one, like you figure out that Michael's cousin, Francesca's husband dies. And Francesca is absolutely heartbroken. And you get to read Michael's inner monologue before he dies. And he, re and you realize that oh crap, this man is in love with his cousin's wife. Like what's gonna happen? Um, but no, he he keeps his feelings in check. He like buries them as far as they can go within him. He's like, I cannot, like that's my cousin's wife. Like, no, no, no. Like I respect my cousin so much. I respect Francesca so much. I'm not going to tell her my feelings whatsoever. After her husband ends up passing away, Michael ends up traveling like all the way around the world in order to avoid Francesca. Because if he's like, I, if I'm next to this woman, I'm gonna reveal things I should not be revealing. Like that is not okay. I do not wanna make her uncomfortable. I do not want to ruin our friendship and our connection that we have by telling her that I'm in love with her. They haven't seen each other in a few years and Michael finally comes back to claim his title because he's inheriting his title from his cousin. Um, and so years later, he finally comes back and it's like, I think it's time. Things happen, okay? I just wanna say that. So uh, Michael in here definitely falls first. He falls for Francesca years before Francesca that even like pops into her brain. So um, I do love this one. And it's probably my favorite in the Bridgerton series. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 recommendations where the hero ends up falling first. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. What are we gonna do? Let's do a moon emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.